So I am in full preparation mode because in a few days I'm going to have the first coding exam of my entire life. So if you watched my last video, you saw me having a screening interview for my dream company. And the recruiter decided that I wasn't a total weirdo, so they invited me to take a coding assignment as part of the recruitment process. And for the first few days, my strategy has basically been to do as many lead code problems as I possibly can and try to understand the patterns that lay behind these problems. And while this is not a bad approach, I realized that for me it was a lot more efficient to try to recreate the exam conditions as much as I could. And I realized that Lead Code actually has an online mock assessment, which mimics a real online interview in the sense that they give you about an hour and two problems that you have to solve within this hour. And then you get a score based on your solution and how fast you were in comparison to other people who took this test. And initially I think my score was quite poor, but after taking a few more of these tests, I slowly saw my grade go up. So I'm getting ready to go to this networking event slash coding workshop. And at the moment, I don't really feel like going because the friend that I usually go with says that she can't go. And I also have my coding exam tomorrow. But even if I don't feel like it, I'm still going to force myself out because usually these events turn out to be really nice and you meet a lot of interesting people. Okay, let's go. <laughs> So I just got back from this networking event and it was probably the best one I've been to so far. The person I was presenting seemed to be a, a really competent computer scientist and I want to try to use some of her code for some simple astrophysics problem just to see if it can be done. I also talked a bit with this woman who is organizing the event and she told us that she used to have a company in Crimea which was destroyed in 2014 and she just lost most of her money. So she lost the company, so that was a very moving story. But just another reason why you should go to these kind of networking events, because you meet really interesting people. Anyway, I'm just eating some yogurt and protein powder for a late night snack, because I didn't have a proper dinner. And tomorrow morning I will have my coding exam, so fingers crossed. Oh God. Okay, so I decided to do my coding assignment from home, because I think I'm just more relaxed here. I hope they don't start any construction work outside of the window, that would be very annoying. But yeah, I went out for a quick 10 minute walk to get some sunlight in my face. Now I'm just going to look through some of my notes and then I'm going to do the exam. I burned my porridge this morning, which is already a great start of the day. A few moments later. Okay. Okay, I just got out from my first coding exam. I think it was okay. It wasn't as difficult as I thought. I think I solved one question fully correct and then the other two I was a little bit uncertain. There was an issue in one of the questions where I had to upload a Jupyter notebook. I'm not sure if it actually got fully uploaded but I wrote to the recruiter explaining what happened and also just wrote him my solution quickly in case. So he said he would look into it and hopefully that doesn't affect my result in any way. Um, but it was a good experience. Now I'm going to go on a walk or something just to clear my head. It's always nice when an exam is over because then you can finally do all of the things that you have been postponing. In my case that was reaching out to a collaborator about finishing a project, making some more applications and going to the gym of course. Okay so I just heard back from the recruiter and I did not pass on to the next stage. And I know I shouldn't feel bad but I do feel a little bit bad. The recruiter told me to not feel bad because they simply had a very high bar to pass people to the next stage. And he told me that he liked me in the first interview so I could always reach out to him in January again. By that time I will hopefully have gotten a bit more experience in taking these coding exams. I was a bit disappointed but I also know that I have a lot more opportunities. And in the evening I ended up going to dinner with a friend and we watched the Yumanji movie from 1995. Okay, it's currently Saturday afternoon and 
I have spent all morning doing a lot of different tests for my pipeline and they all seem to be running nicely so I will continue building that. And while I'm waiting for some tests to finish, I've also been trying out the code that the speaker showed us at this networking event slash workshop that I went to because I want to see if I can adapt her code to a simple problem in astrophysics because I'm just curious to see if it will work, but I think it will. So I will continue doing that. Today I also need to do some domestic stuff like recycling, going out to buy some stuff before the shop closes and uh, doing some cleaning because it's quite dusty in here. <laughs> It's currently 10.15 p.m. and I just got the code from the workshop running with a simple astrophysics problem. So I'm going to try and reach out to the speaker next week and tell her. I'm going to sleep now because I'm very tired, but I really wanted to get this done today, so I'm happy. I spent most of Sunday trying to perfect my GitHub repo for this example project I made with the code from the workshop. I even went into my office to get some diversity in my environment and I was able to finish my project to a version that I was content with and on Monday I even sent my code to the speaker and she was very happy and made me a referral to a position at her company. I think in general companies are happy to interview you if you have made some example project extending upon their work. So we will see where this leads. Hi, thank you if you watched this far. I wanted to end this video by making a small announcement on the future of this channel. So I recently did a poll where I asked my subscribers if they preferred more personal vlogs and talking videos or if they wanted more science and physics content. And, and it seemed like some people really did prefer only the vlogs and some people prefer the physics videos. But there was still a majority of people who wanted a mix of both personal vlogs and more physics and science content. I'm quite happy with these results because I genuinely enjoy making both types of videos. I'm very happy that I did this poll be because I've been struggling to decide if I should do more personal vlog type videos or if I should do more physics and science content. But for now, I guess I will keep it as it is and have a bit of a mix of videos. And if you only want to watch the vlogs, then you can only watch the vlogs. And if you only want to watch the physics content, then you can only watch the physics content. So thanks to those who answered this, I am currently working on some physics videos that are very excited about so I will see you if you choose to watch any of those. Bye!